Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh to some of you and peace out to the rest of you. Black heart is sign of black and again ask me to hit that share button. Uh, thanks if you've hit share or like or subscribe but I single out the share button because that benefits us and the message is more important than the messenger. That being said, you saw the title. What about the non-formers? You're asking, what does the non-formal mean? <laughs> That's who I was referring to in my last video. When I entitled it, The Best Man That Many Edo Sisters Will Choose. That's the non-former, the non-former itness. The non-former drug dealer. The non-former robber, stick-up kid. The non-former gangbanger. The non-former womanizer. The non-former weed head. That's the non-former knucklehead. That's who I'm talking about. The non-former is that guy. He didn't start his life off as a nigger. He didn't start off his teenage years as a stereotypical nigger. An idness. So you know what? He can't ever be a former, an ex-idness. <laughs> that's the one that's not getting picked. He ain't chose when he's young. He ain't chose when he gets to be an adult. And he's not chosen all the way up until she has another nigga's kids, the Idness kids, or the former Idness's kids, and a used up body, and the inability to pair bond, and some debt probably. Or she's just at least lost a lot of what she's earned and saved, bailing these ignorant ass niggas out of jail. The non-former is most of you in the audience and it's me and we're the ones that are consistently offered the worst deals, not even by Sapphire, but also by Becky. Becky ain't no better. I mean, she acts a little better in the beginning, but Becky, she pretty much about the same. If you were a white dude, Becky would be exactly the same way to you that Sapphire is to us. So what about the non-formers? I just got on here to record this to tell you, look, we got to tell the young bloods that are making decisions uh, that will not put them on the path to be an idness so they can never become an ex idness We need to let them know, look, blood, the best that she over there, you know, the fine one, the cute one, the best that she will ever pick in life when she has options is the ex knucklehead, the ex idness the ex stick up kid. You gotta, that means you gotta go through this nigga phase, this idness phase, this stereotypical nigga phase. You gotta go through it and come out with some felonies and tattoos and then change yourself if she even decides she wants a good guy later. That's it. You're making decisions that are even smarter than that. You're making decisions right now, young blood, that are gonna put you past that. You get to bypass that phase. You starting on a straight path from right now. So that means you're gonna have a, a, a really nice shining history morally and financially when you get older. I mean, you may not be rich, but you're gonna have a, a, a nice shining history. You're gonna have a very clean record and probably better credit. She's only going to come to you. You are already making the decision for which she is eliminating you from the market. She and every other woman that is attractive and has at least two options for boyfriends is, is eliminating you from the, the, the whole market. So even if this teenager to whom you're talking is religious, those of you in the audience, and he does not believe in fornication, you make him understand you may not be sour about not fornicating when you get older because you weren't trying to, but you got to understand that they are making decisions based on their own morality. So if they're making decisions based on a morality that allows them to fornicate, then how dare they look at you and write you off and say, there's no way I'd fornicate with him and it ain't got nothing to do with your religion. It's just, it just has to do with them and their immorality, which is why they assume that your morality is a problem. This is what you got to understand. Make them understand as well. Let these young bloods know, hey man, look, even if you ain't just chasing the punani trying to fornicate, you got to understand that you're being eliminated in their minds, not because of that, but because you're, you're not going to be an idness. So you'll never be an ex idness, a former idness. That's it. You eliminate it. And they're going to wait until they just don't have any better options. Um, and they really, you're the best option now. And all of them are on code about this young blood. All of them are. You're not going to be an idness. They're all going to overlook you now. And they're not going to come around until, until they have somebody else's kids. Maybe some STDs. At least they had 
um, some debt, a used up body and the inability to pair bond. They're only going to come and give you the worst that they have to offer. Nothing else. If you stay in the West, young blood, that's all you have to look forward to. Now, here's what I'm here's why I'm saying this. And here's why you should tell these young bloods this. If you tell young bloods it ain't going to be no idness to get some kind of skill set that's exportable and then get a, save up some bread and then get a passport and export that skill and save up more money over time. You tell them this, they get started when they're young. When they get older, when they get to be middle age, they're already far ahead of the game. This also would create a black business owner class in many of these other second world nations. In the third world, some people actually do better in third world because there's less red tape to go through if they have a head start. But these second world nations like Brazil, like Thailand, um, so many second world nations and sometimes third, but yeah, definitely second world nations. These are areas where they got some infrastructure and third world nations are trying to develop. So what I'm saying is that you get these skills that are exportable for the country that you'd like to be in. Guess what? This is when, and, and, and so you get a bunch of us leaving the States at a young age with some cash saved up, ready to start some sort of business. We become a business owning class. You get it? Then you have your family, your kids in these other areas. They inherit your business or they can uh, translate the wealth you have into a head start in the business of their choice. Then... We be, then you have another generation. Now, this younger generation may be from a black father and an Asian mother or a black father and a black mother or a black father and a mestizo mother. I am going to tell you avoid Becky's. It's not just that I'm biased, even though I have the right to be, but I, you know, they're still generally dangerous. Um, but Sapphire is proven to be dangerous in the West. So you can have a black, black child in the continent, depending on which country you go to, that's properly raised. That's possible. Hell, you can got you can have black black child even in some other places because they actually do have black people in Southeast Asia. Believe it or not, <laughs> you find one of them. They may be in villages, but you find one of them and move them to the big city with you. You don't have to take them to the United States. They won't even ask at that point. You just be like, look, I ain't going back stateside. They start talking. I want to go to America. You you say to them, you're gonna be back in your village. That what you want? No, you stay here with me. You can visit your family. They're not too far away. You, you, but, you, but these are black women. And you so you can have a black, black child. So the point I'm making is that we can start the, the process by which black men who are expats can become a business, a, a, a business owning class. And we don't have to exclude black, uh, black men of other nationalities from joining our communities, socially speaking, and even financially, if that's what they're doing. We don't have to do that. It's not just strictly Ado's thing. Although we would probably be the ones that started off because, and let's be honest, yeah, our women drove us out. I don't tell you travel for women, but let's not lie about what, what the major push factor was. In addition to white supremacy, it was Sapphire's cooperation with white supremacy, knowingly or unknowingly, that pushed us the hell out. That's it. But what at the end of the day, what I'm saying to you is what about the non-formers, non-former itness? Never was an itness. You got to bounce. You're not given a choice unless you want to live your life by yourself. Celebrately, you don't have a choice to stay in the West. It's not going to happen. Sorry. If you are going to stay and let these young bloods also know if you're going to stay in the West and you're sure about it, you need to make that decision and commit to it at a young age. Why? Because you need to get a vasectomy as soon as you're legally old enough and don't tell the women you got it. Why is that? Because um, if you don't, they're going to try to trap you. That's real. I mean, they may not want you when you're building, but when you got something going on and they got somebody else's kids and they know they can't keep you any other way, they're going to try to trap you that way. So, you know, go ahead, man. Get it and don't tell them. And then when they come and they try to tell you, well, you know, I'm, I'm pregnant. You just say, uh, yeah. And then you show them a copy of what you had. Or you just say, look, I already know it ain't mine. How do you know? Because I know your cycle. 
I know that you and I only did it at a time when you couldn't conceive because I know when you can conceive. How do you know I got my way? Whatever the case is. But you know when it comes to you talking about some, it's your baby so that you feel trapped to raise her and uh, stay with her and raise her kids by other men, you know, okay, no, that's not the case. And I'm not telling you to fornicate. It's not what I'm doing. But what I am telling you is how to not get caught up in that mess. You're going to already have to deal with STDs. If you're going to do that, you're going to have to deal with that. You're going to have to stand in front of God as well about that. But at the very least, you won't be forced and stuck raising somebody else's kids. Because believe you me, you are you and I already know you listening to me in the audience. We know this. We just got to tell these young bloods if they're making decisions that one that uh, from which they will never be a former illness, they're they're going to face these nasty options. That's it. Nothing else. And honestly, if these women find out that they got vasectomies, they may make up some false charge to get these guys thrown in jails and prisons so that they have to fight off other dudes. Because they get vindictive. This is a real um, scenario. I think I've talked enough for the most part, but the last thing I wanted to say before going is that uh, I made a reference earlier to Shahrazad Ali. Shahrazad Ali told the best truth to which she had access. She said that the black man is the only man, regardless of the continent he's on, that gets disrespected by his woman. And that every other man is respected and revered by his woman. She was almost correct. She wasn't lying. She just told what she had access to. She was almost correct. The real truth is that actually Native Americans are one group, uh, uh, an example in which you find women that don't respect a lot of the men because they can't. However, look what happened to them. They went through not exactly what we went through, but they went through the same severity in a different form for the same length of time. They're as broken as we are. Some of their groups are extinct, right? They also dealt with this. Family units broken up. They have had to face this. This is real. This is true. So there are other groups that have it, but look what happened to them. You understand? She may not have been aware of that because she said this in the 90s and in, in the 90s we were more subject to the uh, uh, we were more subject then than we are now to the idea that every other group is somewhat together and we're not but if you tell these young bloods to travel they will see not only that not everybody's together but they will also see the conditions and the commonalities between the people that are together and the people that aren't and they realize oppression is one of them so but the other thing about Shahrazad Ali uh, that I wanted to point out to you was that what Shahrazad Ali said at that point was as true as she knew it to be. However, now it is not the black man. It is the Western man that is routinely disrespected by his woman. Do you see? See that white Western man is losing the respect of his woman in Germany. Yeah, Scandinavia, France. Spain, the UK, Australia. You listen to them white boys and they'll tell you the same thing. Sydney MGTOW was dealing with the same thing in Sydney, Australia. He did a live stream with Coach Greg Adams I haven't finished watching yet. Yeah, he's not going through any better over there. Um, in France, a do-it-yourself paternity test is illegal. A father is not allowed to test the paternity of a child for whom he is paying. This puts him completely at the mercy of women. So all a woman has to do is say, this is his baby, send me the money, and he's on the hook. That's it. He can't test the, chi uh, the child's DNA. It's illegal. I want you to imagine that. So you can be a non-former or their version in France of the non-former, the guy that they don't want. But then they decide, you know what, I don't want him. I actually kind of despise this dude, but I like effing this other guy over here, but he ain't got no money. That's probably why he can lay the dingling down. So I'm gonna put, I'm gonna get, you know, alpha F's beta bucks. I'm gonna get this alpha seed and I'm gonna get this beta over here on the hook for it. They have a clear, legally uncontested carte blanche to practice the twin mating strategy. This is coming back this is the boomerang effect. The white society is now getting exactly what the F it deserves. This is the best time for us to step the F out and let them deal with it. 
Let their very family structure crumble like what they did to ours. They deserve it. The ones of them who morally don't deserve it as individuals are also the same ones that would say, I'm going to leave the society for moral reasons, but most of them ain't doing that. So let's step aside, get that passport, bounce, let them deal with what they deserve. Let it crumble. You want to meet the good white dudes, you got a high chance of meeting them in places like Thailand and the Philippines. And even then, they ain't always the good ones because they're the ones that actually do go to these areas to dig out little kids. It's just if we got blamed for that during Passport Gate. But no, they're actually the ones that do do this stuff. But you go there and you find the ones that ain't even in the little kids, you're more likely to meet the ones who say, you know what, family situation's jacked up back over there. I'm bouncing. And you can say, yeah, it is jacked up. It was supposed to be jacked up because they jacked up. You're going to meet the Australian expat telling you, well, you know, I'll I'll tell you, Mike, the uh, family situation uh, down under is is really bad. Um, So I came here to the Philippines and I've uh, got my wife and my babies. Um, And I I think it's much more of a a stable situation if you find the right woman, you find the right Sheila. And that's when you say, yeah, you're right. It is bad down under. It's true. And it has to be bad. What makes you say it has to be? Is it the loss? Well, it's what y'all did to the Aborigines, or rather what your ancestors did to the Aborigines. Their family structure has been jacked up for a long time. But this was bound to happen. It's a boomerang effect. And you can tell them. And chances are they stop and think. They say, wow. Yeah, it makes sense, Mike. Yeah, yeah. Maybe that's what it is, Mike. And then you, you have a conversation. You're going to meet that Canadian. Man, you know, it's, it's, it's hell in Canada. Of course it is. Look at the First Nations people. It happened to them. It was bound to come back because bad habits spread. And if you can, if you, uh, if people are exposed to a, an oppression that creates bad habits out of necessity, these bad habits will spread as luxuries to the other side. And that's what happened. And, and you know, you're going to you have the Brits talking about it. And you say, yeah, well, I mean, look at the colonization that jacked up other societies. Of course, this was going to hit y'all. So um, even then, that's if you want to have a conversation. I've talked enough. I've gone 17 minutes. I didn't mean to. I've been trying to make this short. This is my seventh time recording this, trying to keep it brief. The point is that uh, that that it's coming back to hit them. And if you don't believe in religion and, and, and you know, making a, a moral pilgrimage or rather a moral migration for spiritual reasons to go elsewhere, then at least understand this. At least understand that practically speaking, this is coming back and hitting them. Our family situations and structures were good compared to what they were supposed to be. They were they were good for people who had been through what we'd been through. That is true. We were actually very conservative in that regard, but we did have illegitimate children. This did happen. However, what's going on now is that, and see, we had this back then, but we thought we were worse than what we really were. You see, we didn't know a lot of the statistics. The statistics proved that we were better back then than what we actually thought we were. That's what wound up happening. We can go back to that. But understand that the the, the idea that we were so bad went into their culture and now they've actually become worse than what we used to be and they're almost catching up with what we are right now. 50% out of wedlock birth rate among white people in America. Great. Good. So you... The one that's never going to be a former uh, uh, idness. The one, the, you that's not a former idness. Now tell the young blood is not going to be a former idness. What the deal is and why you and he should get your passports and bounce the uck out of there. And all you need to do is start researching countries to see which one best suits you. That's it. I hope that this has been a benefit. Asalaamu Alaikum. Blackheart sign a blackout.